Good morning, my neighbours! Ladies and gents, it's time for an alternative paper review. Let's get it. First up to the FT this morning, not that headline about Barclays, just underneath it, Trump donor numbers fall by 200K as mounting legal bills dent the war chest. Which is good news, I think, if you happen to sit on the left of the political persuasion. Because Donald Trump's war chest is already quite significantly behind Joe Biden's and we're not even really into the campaign mode yet. Now you might also think, well, what's 200,000 people? You know, Trump's got millions of supporters, fanatics, in fact, people who line the street approaching Mar-a-Lago. Well, okay, yes, that's probably true. But once you start applying a little bit of maths to it, a bit of arithmetic, how many of those millions of people are actually donating to him? You know, you've got a lot of people who support him purely for the attention economy. You know, they know that if they post something pro-Trump, there'll be a load of people like me clapping back on it, saying, you don't know what you're talking about, or these people are morons. Then you've got the people who psychologically are only in it. They're only pro-Trump because to them, they equate winning with making someone else lose, right? Which it sounds weird, doesn't it? But for a lot of people, this all this is about, this entire thing, is making sure that Democrats or so-called libtards lose, and then that makes them feel better about themselves. And I suppose here's the kicker, is whether you are benefiting from the attention economy or if you psychologically equate your winning with someone else's loss, either way, if you're not donating to Donald Trump, then he's sort of onto a loser here. Then you've got his $350 million fine from the civil suit. Then you've got the Stormy Daniels case. I don't know, it's just, it's, it's not looking good, is it? for old Donny. Next up to the Daily Express. PM, completely ridiculous for illegal migrants to jump the queue. Now this is just textbook Daily Express. This is a like archetypal, ridiculous, ignorant, bigoted headline, right? PM is saying it's ridiculous for migrants to jump the queue. Nobody's jumping the queue. There are two or three separate queues. If you are an asylum seeker, which is actually what they're getting at here, not migrants. If you're an asylum seeker and you come to the UK and you need somewhere to live because you've left war and famine and persecution, arguably you are in greater need than somebody sitting here in the domestic population. <laughs> but they're two different queues. They are qualified and established very differently. But if they published this story in, what, like an honest way, where they said, these guys have just left Afghanistan where they were about to be beheaded for being Christians or adulterers, but we're going to make them live on the street because Sandra down the road has just had another baby. A lot of people would be like, well, can't Sandra stay with her mum for a little bit longer? Because these guys, they're, they're desperate. You know, reasonable people might have that reaction. And they know that. Over to the Times, finally. Prince William has issued a Gaza plea for permanent peace. Now, you have to forgive me for the duplication here, because if you follow me on Twitter, I've been ranting about this for the last, like, two or three days, but, like, I am so fascinated by this sort of left-leaning British exceptionalism. Like, normally you see that stuff on the right, like, oh, it would never happen here. On the left, sometimes it also flares up. You know, like, when we demand Keir Starmer, in turn, demands a ceasefire, you know? Why won't you demand a stopping of the bombing in Gaza? It's like, do you really think that anyone in that part of the world is waiting to hear what the UK leader of opposition, like not even the UK prime minister, <laughs> what the UK leader of opposition thinks or directs or demands? Nobody cares. Like Netanyahu is not waiting for the guidance of Keir Starmer. I'm sorry to break it to you if that shatters your illusion of how important Britain is on the world stage. They just won't care. Which is gonna make the next few days really interesting for that subset of left-leaning would-be Labour voters when they're greeted with reality that not only does Netanyahu not care what Keir Starmer thinks or says or demands, but even the future King of England, <laughs> when he demands a ceasefire, or a halt to the bombing. Netanyahu is still gonna be like, yeah, I'm sorry, who who said it? Oh, it's uh, Prince William, the, the future King of England. K king of England, you say, he's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So not of Israel, he's nothing to do with Israel. No, no, not really. Oh, well then, could you could you do me a favor? Could you um, take this memo? So, yeah, tell him to go fuck himself. Nobody cares what Keir Starmer thinks on the world stage and nobody's gonna care what Prince William thinks, says, or demands either. Now that doesn't mean that it shouldn't stop. Obviously it should stop. It's disgusting that it even started. But the point remains, there's only two people who can actually stop that bombing campaign. And that's Netanyahu and Joe Biden. So, take your pick. 